Hi, I'm Paul Sharp from the University of North Carolina School of the Arts, and I'm here at D'Addario to talk to you about perfecting your bow hold. And um, there are many exercises which string teachers use to help make that bow hold comfortable and flexible uh, and strong but relaxed. Um, certain things like this, little exercises where you're um, trying to keep the bow vertical and wave it around in the air and in various contortions and still control it are really important. Sometimes people will have you walk up to the top of the tip with your bow hold and then do the hard part, which is get back to the frog. All of these things which keep your fingers active and not frozen in place are really important to uh, learning how to hold the bow beautifully. As a bass player, uh, I think there are a few other exercises that uh, I would like to show you. Um, with the bass, we have to supply a lot more weight from our body and from our back to get that big string to sound. And particularly, the more uh, dynamic, the more loud we want to play, the more weight we have to use. So uh, it's a really common problem amongst bass players is to get kind of a death grip on the bow and squeeze the living daylights out of the thing. There's a lack of mobility, string changes, or bow changes rather, are clunky, they're not smooth, and if we can refine the bow hold so that it's responsive to down and up motion and string changes, we can maintain our beautiful round sound that we're after. One of these exercises is uh, something I learned from my teacher, Jeff Bradetich, when I studied with him at Northwestern, and, and that was this little exercise. He has you start out with the right hand held like this. You can see I've curled up my knuckles, and out to the uh, first knuckle here, just beyond my ring, I've got the hand flat. Like I could even set something there, like a kick of rosin sometimes I'll use, just to ensure that I keep the top of my hand flat. I go from this position to a 90 degree angle between the top of my hand and these fingers. I'm going to make this look really easy, but I know uh, from experience with many students that the first time you do this, it's anything but easy. It does not feel normal. Uh, my teacher encouraged me to do this, you know, when I was sitting in math class, uh, during English Lit, listening to a lecture just to get my fingers comfortable and relaxed and capable of moving to the full extent of their range. You can see how high I bring this up. It's actually a little concave on the top of my hand. Once I'd perfected this motion, my teacher encouraged me to take a pencil and try the same thing with it. You can see how my thumb is working. It extends down a little bit. I keep the top of the hand flat. I use my pinky a lot to kind of pull the bow into my hand. You can see the action there. Here's another angle. I try to do very little rotation of the pencil. In other words, I'm not spinning it with my thumb. I raise it into the hand. Once it's comfortable with a pencil, again, a pencil in math class is something easily findable. You can do this under your little desktop, do this for hours, getting that relaxed. The next step would be to take the bow, flop the hand, those fingers on it, find the position just right, and position your thumb, and then holding the bow with your left hand at the tip like this, practice the same thing, raising and lowering the bow. I like to engage the pinky a bit. So just to ensure that I'm engaging the pinky, I'll lift the middle two fingers up and try the exercise this way as well. But most of the time, you just want to practice this to get this comfortable. Once I've done that, you can experiment with string crossings. See how I'm crossing strings with just the fingers. 
there may be a variety of the way teachers teach string crossings. And some of them may or may not include this method for string crossing. But whether or not you know, they, they talk about finger action or not, what it does ensure is that even when I'm using my arm to cross strings, I can get just a, a little bit of uh, assistance from the, the fingers. And you can see my hand is responsive to the motion of the bow moving from string to string. Helps keep the weight in, keeps my hand relaxed, and gives me a tone that retains its very connected legato sound, which is what you want in a, in a good string crossing.